Welcome back to our course, Fundamentals of Operating Systems, based on the textbook Operating System Concepts, 10th edition, by Silbershots, Gagney, and Galvin, published by Wiley Publishing. We are continuing our discussion of the paging memory allocation scheme. So let's just pick up where we left off with free frames. When a process arrives in the system to be executed, its size, expressed in pages, is examined. Each page of the process needs one frame. Therefore, if the process requires n pages, then at least n frames must be available in memory. If that n number of frames are available, they are allocated to this arriving process. So we still see that in this allocation scheme that we've discussed so far, it still requires us to load the entire job in memory before we start. The first page of the process is loaded into one of the allocated frames, and the frame number is put in the page table for this process. The next page is loaded into another frame, and its frame number is put into the page table, and so on, as you can see in this figure. This is another view of that free busy list, or memory map table, that we were discussing. An important aspect of paging is the clear separation between the programmer's view of memory and the actual physical memory. The programmer views memory as one single spot, one single space, containing only this one program. In fact, the user program is scattered throughout physical memory. And this physical memory also holds other programs. The difference between the programmer's view of memory and the actual physical memory is reconciled by the address translation hardware that we just described in the last lesson. The logical addresses are translated into physical addresses. This mapping is hidden from the programmer as is controlled by the operating system. Notice that our user process is unable to access memory it does not own. It has no way of addressing memory outside of its page table. And the table includes only those pages that the process owns. Each process has its own page table. We've already found that out. Since the operating system is managing physical memory, it must be aware of the allocation details of physical memory, which frames are allocated, which frames are available, and how many total frames there are, and so on. This information is generally kept in a single system-wide data structure called a frame table, or as I mentioned, a memory map table. The frame table has one entry for each physical page frame indicating whether the latter is free or allocated, and if it is allocated, to which page of which process. In addition, the operating system must be aware that user processes operate in user space, and all logical addresses must be mapped to produce physical addresses. If a user makes a system call to do an I.O., for example, and provides an address as a parameter, a buffer, for instance, that address must be mapped to produce the correct physical address just like we've described. The operating system maintains a copy of the page table for each process, just as it maintains a copy of the instruction counter, or instruction register, and the register contents. This copy is used to translate logical addresses to physical addresses whenever the operating system must map a logical address to a physical address manually. It is also used by the CPU dispatcher to define the hardware page table when a process is to be allocated to CPU. Paging, therefore, increases the context switch time. A little more overhead necessary for paging. As there is a separate 
page table per process, a pointer to the page table is stored with the other register values, just like an instruction pointer, in the process control block of each process. You remember our discussion about the process control block. When the CPU scheduler selects a process for execution, it must reload the user registers and the appropriate hardware page table values from the stored user page table. The hardware implementation of the page table can be done in several ways. In the simplest case, the page table is implemented as a set of dedicated high-speed hardware registers which makes the page address translation very efficient. However, this approach increases that context switch time, as each of these registers must be exchanged during the context switch. The use of registers for the page table is satisfactory if the page table is reasonably small, say 256 entries. Most contemporary CPUs, however, support much larger page tables. For example, 2 to the 20th power entries. For these machines, the use of fast registers to implement the page table is not feasible. Rather, the page table is kept in main memory, and the page table base register points to that page table in main memory. Changing page tables requires changing only this one register, substantially reducing context switch time. Although storing the page table in main memory can yield faster context switches, it may also result in lower memory access time. Suppose we want to access location I. We must first index into the page table using the value in the page table base register offset by the page number for I. This task requires one memory access. It provides the frame number, which is combined with the page offset to produce the actual address as we just discussed in the last lesson. We can then access the desired place in memory. With this scheme, two memory accesses are needed to access data, one for the page table entry and then one for the actual data. Therefore, memory access is slowed by a factor of two, a delay that is considered intolerable under most circumstances. The standard solution to this problem is to use a special, small, fast lookup hardware cache called a translation look aside buffer TLB. The TLB is associative high speed memory. Each entry in the transaction look aside buffer consists of two parts, a key and a value. When the associative memory is presented with an item, the item is compared with all the keys simultaneously. If the item is found, the corresponding value field is returned. The search is fast. A TLB lookup in modern hardware is part of the instruction pipeline, essentially adding no performance penalty. To be able to execute the search within the pipeline step, however, the TLB must be kept small. It's typically between 32 and 1,024 entries in size. Some CPUs implement separate instruction and data address TLBs. That can double the number of TLB entries available because those lookups occur in different pipeline steps. We can see in this development an example of the evolution of CPU technology systems. They've evolved from having no TLBs to having multiple levels of TLBs just as they have multiple levels of caches. The translation look aside buffer is used with page tables in the following way. The TLB contains only a few of the page table entries. When a logical address is generated by the CPU, the memory management unit first checks to see if its page number is present in the TLB. If the page number is found, 
its frame number is immediately available and is used to access memory. As just mentioned, these steps are executed as part of the instruction pipeline within the CPU, adding no performance penalty compared with a system that does not implement paging. If the page number is not in the TLB, which is known as a TLB miss, address translation proceeds following the steps we talked about earlier, where a memory reference to the page table must be made. When a frame number is attained, we can use it to access memory. In addition, we add the page number and the frame number to the TLB so that it will be found quickly on the next reference. This is all very similar to the caching techniques that you have already heard. If the TLB is already full of entries, an existing entry must be selected for replacement. Replacement policies range from least recently used through round robin to random. Some CPUs allow the operating system to participate in least recently used entry replacement, while others handle the matter themselves. Furthermore, some TLBs allow certain entries to be wired down, meaning they cannot be removed from the TLB. Typically, TLB entries for key kernel code are wired down. Some of the TLBs store address space identifiers in each TLB entry. An address space identifier uniquely identifies each process and is used to provide address space protection for that process. When the TLB attempts to resolve a virtual page number, it ensures that the address space identifiers for the currently running process matches the address space identifier associated with the virtual page. If the address space identifiers do not match, the attempt is treated as a TLB miss. In addition to providing address space protection, an address space identifier allows the TLB to contain entries for several different processes simultaneously. If the translation look aside buffer does not support separate address space identifiers, then every time a new page table is selected, for example with each context switch, the TLB must be flushed or erased to ensure that the next executing process does not use the wrong translation information. Otherwise, the TLB could include old entries that contain valid virtual addresses but have incorrect or invalid physical addresses left over from the previous process. The number of times that the page number of interest is found in the translation look-aside buffer is called the hit ratio. And, uh, an 80% hit ratio, for example, means that we find the desired page number in the TLB 80% of the time. Hardware features can have a significant effect on memory performance. An operating system improvement, such as paging, can result in and in turn be affected by hardware changes, such as these TLBs. We'll be looking at the impact of the hit ratio on the TLB again later. TLBs are a hardware feature and therefore would seem to have little concern to the operating systems and their designers. But the designer needs to understand the function and features of TLBs which vary by hardware platform. For optimal operation, an operating system designed for a given platform must implement paging according to the platform's TLB design. Likewise, a change in the TLB design, for example between different generations of Intel CPUs, may necessitate a change in paging implementation of the operating systems that use it. Well, that was uh, something of a complicated lesson and it was a long one. So let's take a break here so that you have an opportunity to update your study guide and maybe get a grip on some of the issues that we described about these TLBs and other issues. When you're ready, come on back and we will move on because we're not finished with our discussion of paging. So we will be moving on to 
memory protection regarding paging. See you shortly.